Hey everybody, this video brings us right outside of Richmond, Virginia. And the reason why we are out here today is to take a look at something pretty interesting, a bit of Civil War history. Now, I don't necessarily consider myself to be a Civil War buff, if you will, but I do love learning about the Civil War. I do love Civil War history. And in my opinion, this right here is one of the most interesting Civil War battlefields that you can visit. We are here at Drury's Bluff National Battlefield Park. As it says, Drury's Bluff, 1862. As capital of the Confederate States of America, Richmond, Virginia became the constant target of northern armies. It was vulnerable by water as well as by land. Gunboats can navigate the James River all the way to Richmond. So as you can see, the Union Army could have sailed down the Chesapeake Bay right up the James River all the way to the capital of Richmond, Virginia. It never necessarily worked out that way, but we'll get into that in a couple of minutes. But still a very interesting bit of Civil War history. This park is really, really interesting for a number of different reasons. And also very interesting because once we get down to the very end of this trail, everything opens up and you're going to see something you don't get to see at many battlefields. So the actual battle took place on May 15th, 1862. The Union Army wanted to test the defenses of the Confederacy. They wanted to see just how well they were defending Richmond, Virginia against attacks up the James River. And the answer was quite well. Again, Richmond, Virginia was the capital of the Confederate States of America. And as such, they clearly wanted to defend their capital very, very well. And they had fortified the river very, very well. And it did not end very, very well for the Union Army. They did not win this battle. Again, the, the James River was quite well fortified and Richmond was saved. And from that, they realized, the Union Army realized, we cannot really attack Richmond, Virginia from the James River. They abandoned that idea and did not really try such a foolish idea once again, because they realized it was gonna be a, uh, a losing cause. It is definitely a little bit of a hike to actually get to the bluff, to get to Fort Darling. But once you get there, you will realize why it's worth the hike, why it's worth walking down this trail. Because again, it will open up and you will see some pretty amazing things. There's some interesting historical markers up here telling you all about the actual battle. And the view itself makes this, this hike completely 100% worth it. It's not a very big battlefield it's not like gettysburg or something like that but it is it is worth your stop it is worth checking out honestly just for the view alone but again the interesting history that happened here if you're into ironclads yeah this is again a place you you want to stop you want to check out and just regardless even if you're not into civil war history once you see what's down here you're going to realize why you're going to want to pull over Whew, it's actually quite warm out today and um in Virginia. Thankfully, we are walking through the woods, so the, the shade is helping, but it is still very, very warm out today. But we are coming across our first historical marker here, a permanent post. By 1863, the Jury Bluff post expanded into a military city. Hundreds of Confederate soldiers, sailors, and Marines camped on these grounds. The Confederate States Naval Academy held classes. <sighs> It was very hard walking up that hill, held classes in buildings and aboard the side-wheeled steamer CSS Patrick Henry anchored in the James River. A wide variety of supporting structures were built that included barracks, a chapel, a post office, a hotel, and even a Masonic lodge. Steamships brought civilians down from Richmond nearly every day to picnic, socialize, and watch the sailors and Marines drill. Look at this. It was very, very large. As you can see, unfortunately, not a whole heck of a lot of this is still necessarily here, but um, there is still plenty of it. So I'm not sure which way we want to go. Do we want to go that way or do we want to go that way? I'm thinking, I'm thinking this way, but I don't actually know. I am still completely out of breath and extremely sweaty from walking up that very slight little incline. But the good news is we have actually chosen wisely. We have found the remains of Fort Darling. Here's all the earthworks. And there's yet another historical marker here saying a very neat chapel. The little white chapel that stood here was built by soldiers of the garrison and held 150 people. Different ministers came from Richmond each, uh, each week to preach. A small burial ground was located just 50 yards beyond the chapel. A reminder that life at Drury's Bluff was not without hazard from battle or disease. So somewhere around here, maybe down that way, there's actually a cemetery 
I'm not entirely sure where that is. I might try to look for that, try to find that, but um, we're gonna worry about that later because I wanna show you guys what's, what's right over on the other side of these, these little earthworks here. And this right here is what I wanna show you guys. This right here is the whole reason why I pulled over, stopped here to check this place out, to, to show something pretty amazing to you guys. There's this platform right here. And when we get to the top, you're gonna see something pretty awesome. I'm also probably gonna be pretty winded from walking up these like 10 or so stairs, but it is what it is. It is completely 100% worth it. Check out this amazing view. Look at that. Again, this is the reason alone you wanna come out here and check out this battlefield. There's amazing history that happened here, but honestly, this view alone of the bend in the river makes pulling over 100% absolutely worth it. I can honestly just stand here, look at this all day long. In fact, if I didn't have to drive back to Pennsylvania, I just might. So as it says right here on this historical marker, May 15th, 1862, the Battle of Drury's Bluff. When federal gunboats rounded the distant bend in the James River, right, right there, they entered a shooting gallery. Confederate soldiers and Marines along the riverbanks ranked the decks with musket fire. Confederate guns here in the fort opened fire. The river obstructions consisting of sunken ships and stone cribs worked as planned. The USS Galena, if I'm saying that right, could not drive through them, so it was swung broadside in the channel in order to fire its guns at the bluff. This is awesome. This gun right here on this painting is actually right there. That is awesome. And we're definitely going to take a look at that. So one of the reasons why I love this battlefield so much is because I am kind of a sucker for the history of ironclads. If you do not know what an ironclad is, it was essentially a battleship per se, but covered in iron. Many of them sitting very low to the water, almost right at water level. So there was nothing really for cannon fire to actually hit. Not all of them were like that, but many of them were. And right here, right in this river, there was actually an ironclad battle. The USS Monitor was actually here, which is pretty awesome. I believe it was a battle against three different ironclads, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So right here in this river, right at this bend, an epic ironclad battle actually happened. And that is pretty amazing. Again, ironclads are just really interesting. The history behind them is very interesting. Ever since I was a little kid learning about them, I was just fascinated by the idea of an ironclad ship and just what the men had to, to go through to be inside one of those and, and battle, in, battle in one of those. Apparently it was very, very difficult conditions. It was very warm and stuffy inside those and anything that hit the actual ships just ricocheted and made this huge, horrible, loud sound. Apparently just, it was just an awful, awful thing to have to work at. I mean, look, look at this, that is crazy. All covered in iron. I can only imagine what these men had to go through. I would not want to sign up for that. I mean, it'd be cool to be inside an ironclad. Well, actually, I don't know, my claustrophobia would probably not want me to be inside an ironclad, but if I ever got the chance, I'd take a look at one, but I would never, never battle in one. There's actually a quote here from William Keeler, an officer aboard the USS Monitor during the Battle of Drury's Bluff. It says, it was one of those warm, muggy days, which shut up closely as we were, made ventilation very difficult. At times, we were filled with powder smoke below threatening suffocation to us all. Some of the hardest looking men drop fainted at the guns. That is crazy. Again, something I would never in a million years want to do. Those men were extremely, extremely brave, extremely, extremely tough, and just, I just can't imagine what they went through during this battle or any of the battles, honestly, inside an ironclad. Must have been just crazy and intense. I would have passed out within the first, I don't know, as soon as they, as soon as they seal the doors, I would, I would have probably just fainted. It's actually one of those warm, muggy days today as well. It is crazy warm out here right now. The humidity is like 100%. I am sweating profusely. As I'm recording this, the sweat is disgustingly dripping down my back. When I get back to the van, I'm gonna have to, uh, to change, I feel. But again, completely 100% worth it. And I wanna show you guys what's right here. Look at this gun or cannon. I honestly always forget what makes something a gun and what makes something a cannon. I'm, I'm gonna call this a gun, I think, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe this is a, a cannon. It looks like a cannon, but it might actually be considered a gun. Comments down below if you know, but look at this thing. It is huge, it is gigantic. There's the rail it would swivel on. This is how you would raise and lower it. Obviously, it's fixed into place 
at the moment. But look at that. Look at an amazing view right there of the James River. Can you only imagine? I mean, you're, you're sailing up the river to test the defenses of the Confederate States of America. And this is what you see, this giant gun waiting to just fire upon you. I can only imagine how scary that must have been. This is, this is quite large and um, I would not want to be sailing up that river and seeing this. That would, um, that would terrify me. Anybody in the military is just way, way, way braver than I am. Again, this park is just too amazing. The history that happened here is just so cool. And that view is just so, so cool. It's really neat that the, uh, the earthworks are still here. And there is so many different historical markers all, all around here. This says, um, finishing Fort Drury. Immediately after the battle, men of Chesterfield County's own Southside artillery, along with others, worked to strengthen the, the fort. The section before you was likely their first project. Eventually, the earthworks around you formed an enclosed fort armed with as many as eight large guns. There you go. It's a gun, not a cannon. I, I, was, I was right. So, um, with as many as eight large guns, although the defenses at Jury's Bluff became more and more powerful, the fort never fired another shot in anger because, again, the... The Union Army realized they were going to be fighting a losing battle if they were trying to attack Richmond, Virginia by coming up the James River. It was just too well fortified and with eight guns the size of the, the ones we just saw, I can imagine it. It wouldn't have been an easy battle. So at this point, I honestly have no idea where I'm walking right now. Kind of just walking down these paths looking for maybe some other historical markers or some other historical things placed here. And there, I have been out here once before, but I never actually walked down these trails. So again, I don't really know where, where we're heading. The one thing I really do want to find, though, is that cemetery. Don't know if we're going to be able to do that today. I am on a little bit of a time crunch. I can't really explore too much. I do have to get back to Pennsylvania, but I at least want to, um, just to see if it's maybe down this way. Unfortunately, no cemetery yet, but this looks pretty interesting. Look at this, covered way during battle supplies could be brought into the fort through the covered way a tunnel protected from shell fire that is pretty interesting so i'm guessing this right here was maybe part of the covered way it's so awesome that things like this still exist even if not in the original form just the fact that the actual earthworks are still here to think that at one point men from the confederate army actually built these these large mounds of dirt that we're actually standing on right now is really interesting to um to think about that right now we're we're standing on civil war history again men from the civil war built what we're standing on right now that is um this is very very interesting but again i'm really looking for that uh that cemetery but i i can't find it so I might actually have to stand a little bit corrected because this marker right here says, after the repulse of the U.S. Navy on May 15th, 1862, Drury's Bluff became famous as a tangible symbol of Confederate resistance. Work crews made up of impressed slave labor continue construction on the fort, eventually completing a four-sided enclosed earthwork bristling with guns. So perhaps some of this was actually built up by Confederate soldiers, but looks like maybe a good chunk of this, a good majority of this, was actually built by the hands of slave labor, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. I can't imagine being a slave and helping to build a fort, a fortification that was essentially being built to defend slavery. That, that had to be rough. That had to be pretty crazy to be building the fort that was trying to protect what was keeping you enslaved. That, that could not have been fun. Granted, they didn't really have much of a choice in the matter, but just just knowing what those men that were right here, those men and women that were right here were probably going through, the fact that they were enslaved people, and that they were building a fort to help protect what was keeping them enslaved, just just had to be pretty pretty crazy. Not something I would want to go through. All I gotta worry about is tripping over tripping over sticks. Those men had a lot more to worry about. This marker here actually talks a little bit more about the ironclads and why they were invented. It says, hot shot and wooden ships. It was the end of an era. The advent of the ironclad made traditional wooden hauled warships obsolete. Despite this, the Confederates used a centuries old device here, the hot shot furnace. 
Inside the furnace, solid shot were heated red hot. Clay wads of wet hay were then inserted between the powder and the ball to keep the heat from igniting the powder prematurely. When fired at a wooden ship, the sizzling missile could set the vessel ablaze. And right here is the hot shot furnace. So um, all of these, these shot balls right here were actually heated red hot, then put into the gun and shot at a wooden ship, setting it ablaze. That is pretty crazy. And also that's why things like ironclads were invented. Just warships completely adorned in iron, sitting very, very low to the water level. So there really wasn't much to, to attack, wasn't much to hit. It was definitely a very interesting bit of technology. Didn't necessarily work as as well as they may have hoped, but it worked pretty darn well and definitely um, was a, a precursor to sort of modern day warships and even submarines, if you will. So pretty interesting that they actually used the hot shot here. I guess they really didn't need to, probably wasn't really anything they had to worry about here, but it is really interesting that that was a bit of technology they did use here, even though ironclads were the new upcoming type of, of warship. All right, guys, so unfortunately, I was not actually able to locate the cemetery. I have no idea where it is. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. But again, it just gives me another reason to come back out here. And I will definitely be coming back out here again in the future, though hopefully, maybe possibly not on such a warm, disgusting summer day. I'm thinking next time I come out here, it's gonna be the fall. Yeah, that's, uh, that sounds like a much better time to come out here. But honestly, any time coming out here is amazing because of this view alone and because of all the really interesting history that took place here. It's not one of the biggest battlefields there are, but it's one of the most interesting battlefields there are, in my opinion. And I do love stopping out here and we will definitely be back. But with that, I'm gonna go get in the van, crank the AC and um, try not to pass out on the walk back to the van. So as always, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. Be sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, check down below for links to Patreon. If you do become a patron, I will send you a postcard every single month from the road. Also check down below for a link to Spreadshirt, where you can grab yourself retro rest stop t-shirts proceeds, both from Spreadshirt and from Patreon. Do help support the show, keep the show going. It brings us out to awesome and amazing places like this. So I really do appreciate the support. And if you watch this video all the way to the very end, I'm going to say hashtag that's a big gun. Hashtag, that's a big gun if you watch this video all the way to the very end. But all right, guys, again, that's it. So like I said, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. And if you do hit that subscribe button or you are subscribed, then I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Bye.